Hello YouTubers! Tonight it's time for another story, and this time it's from the Bible. I know what you're thinking, but no, stay with me. The Bible becomes that way because when we were growing up, it was given to us as punishment, or we had to memorize one verse here and another verse there, or got a retold version of a Bible story. But you know, when we were in school, our teachers had us fall in love with reading. Not by having us memorize quotes from Old Yeller, but by actually reading the story to us. And that's what I think is missing in our American lives with the Bible. We don't actually read it. A lot of people talk about it. Nobody reads it. So tonight, we're going to read the story of Jonah. Straight through. No additions, no subtractions. So, let's start with the story of Jonah. One day the Lord spoke to Jonah, son of Amittai, and he said, Go to Nineveh, that great city, and speak out against it. I am aware of how wicked its people are. Jonah, however, set off in the opposite direction in order to get away from the Lord. He went to Joppa, where he found a ship about to go to Spain. He paid his fare, went aboard with a crew to sail to Spain, where he would be away from the Lord. But the Lord sent a strong wind on the sea, and the storm was so violent that the ship was in danger of breaking up. Well, the sailors were terrified and cried out for help, each one to his own God. Then, in order to lessen the danger, they threw the cargo overboard. Meanwhile, Jonah had gone below and was lying in the ship's hold, sound asleep. And everybody said, Oh, well, no, the crew's in danger. The captain found him there and said to him, What are you doing asleep? Get up and pray to your God for help. Maybe he'll feel sorry for us and spare our lives. Oh, the sailor said to one another, Let's draw lots and find out who's to blame for getting us in this danger. Well, they did so. And Jonah's name was drawn. <laughs> so they said to him, Now tell us, who's to blame for this? What are you doing here? What country are you from? What's your nationality? Well, I'm a Hebrew. Jonah answered, I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made land and sea. Jonah went on to tell them that he was running away from the Lord. The sailors were terrified, and they said to him, That's an awful thing to do! Duh! The storm was getting worse all the time, and the sailors asked him, What should we do to stop the storm? And Jonah answered, um, Throw me in the sea, it'll calm down. I know it's my fault you're caught in this violent storm. Well, instead, the sailors tried to get to the ship to shore, rowing with all their might. But the storm was getting worse and worse, and they got nowhere. So they cried out to the Lord, O oh Lord, we pray, don't punish us with death for taking this man's life. You, O oh Lord, are responsible for this. It's your doing. So they picked Jonah up and threw him into the sea. And it calmed down at once. This made the sailors so afraid of the Lord, they offered a sacrifice and promised to serve him. At the Lord's command, a large fish swallowed Jonah, and he was inside the fish for three days and three nights. From deep inside the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord his God, In my distress, O Lord, I called to you, and you answered me. From deep in the world of the dead, I cried for help, and you heard me. You threw me down to the depths, to the very bottom of the sea, where the waters were all around me and all your mighty waves rolled over me. I thought I'd been banished from your presence and would never see your holy temple again. The water came over and choked me. The sea covered me completely and the seaweed wrapped around my head. I went down to the very roots of the mountains, into the land whose gates lock shut forever. But you, O oh Lord my God, brought me back from the depths alive. When I felt my life slipping away, then, O oh Lord, I prayed to you, and in your holy temple you heard me. Those who worship worthless idols have abandoned their loyalty to you, but I will sing praises to you forever. I will offer a sacrifice and do what you promised. Salvation comes from the Lord. Then the Lord ordered the fish to spit Jonah up on the beach, and it did. Well, once again, the Lord spoke to Jonah and said, You know, you've had a couple rough days. Why don't you take a week off? And... No, he didn't. 
He said, Go to Nineveh, the great city, and proclaim to the people the message I have given you. So, Jonah obeyed the Lord and went to Nineveh, a city so large it took three days to walk through it. Jonah started walking through the city, and after walking a whole day, In forty days Nineveh will be destroyed! Well, the people of Nineveh believed God's message. I mean, who wouldn't? There's this guy who looks like he knows about God's destruction. So they decided everyone should fast, and all the people, from the greatest to the least, put on sackcloth to show they had repented. When the king of Nineveh heard about it, he got up from his throne, took off his robe, put on sackcloth, and sat down on ashes. <laughs> he sent he sent out a proclamation to the people of Nineveh. This is an order from the king and his officials. No one is to eat anything. All persons, cattle, and sheep are forbidden to eat or drink. All persons and animals must wear sackcloth. Everyone must pray earnestly to God and must give up their wicked behavior and evil actions. Perhaps God will change his mind. Perhaps he'll stop being angry and we will not die. Understand. It was a hope-so situation. God saw what they did, and that they had given up their wicked behavior, so he changed his mind and did not punish them as he said he would. End of story. Well, no, actually not, because Jonah is still hanging around. You think he's happy about it? No, you'd be wrong. Jonah was very unhappy about this and became angry. And so he prayed, Lord, didn't I say before I left home that this was just what you would do? That's why I did my best to run to Spain. I knew you were a loving and merciful God, always patient, always kind, always ready to change his mind and not punish. Now then, Lord, let me die. I'm better off dead than alive. Now, first of all, Jonah's kind of a whiny boy. And second of all, this flies in the face of all the people who said the God of the Old Testament was nothing about destroy, just did nothing but destroy people and, and try to just kill them and punish them and, and that's just not the case. Because Jonah's making a very strong point that this is what God prefers to do. And no matter what you've done in your life, no matter what's going on, what history you have, God's ready to forgive. All we have to do is turn our heart to Him. And the Lord answered, What right do you have to be angry? Well, Jonah went out east of the city and sat down. He made a shelter for himself and sat in the shade, waiting to see what would happen to Nineveh. Then the Lord God made a plant grow up over Jonah to give him some shade, so that he would be more comfortable. God is so good. Jonah was extremely pleased with the plant, but at dawn of the next day, at God's command, a worm attacked the plant, and it died. After the sun had risen, God sent a hot east wind, and Jonah was about to faint from the heat of the sun beating down on his little bald head. Well, it says his head, but... So he wished he were dead. I'm better off dead than alive, he said. Again, Jonah's kind of a whiny boy. But God said to him, What right do you have to be angry about the plant? And Jonah replied, I have every right to be angry, angry enough to die. The Lord said to him, This plant grew up in one night and disappeared the next. You didn't do anything for it. You didn't make it grow. Yet you feel sorry for it. How much more, then, should I feel have pity on Nineveh, that great city? After all, it has more than 120,000 innocent children in it, as well as many animals. That's the end. God doesn't want to destroy. God doesn't want to punish. That's why he sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross for our sins. He's the ultimate sacrifice. All we have to do is accept Him as our Savior, put our trust in Him, ask Him to forgive us our sins, and that's it. Good night, YouTubers.
and have a wonderful evening.